Some time ago, I made a review video for the Nomad EDC, designed by Zeke Minacho and produced by Vic Lin at Work Tough Gear. Well, now I have two more of Zeke's design. This is the Nomad Bushcrafter and Full Flat Ground, and this is the Nomad Bushcrafter and Scandi Grind. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on these two knives, keep watching. Just before we begin, I want to thank Vic Lin at Work Tough Gear for sending out the Nomad Bushcrafters both in Full Flat Ground and in the Scandi Grind so that I could share them with you. So what we'll do is always, I'll bring the camera in so I can show you each of the two knives in a bit of detail. We'll do a few demonstrations with them and I'll give you my thoughts on using them. All right, let's get started. All right, just before we get into some detail on the Nomad Bushcrafters, both in full flat ground and in Scandi grind, I thought I'd show you the original Nomad EDC that I've reviewed previously, only so that you can get a bit of a comparison. And when I get to the test, I am going to be comparing all three of them, one against the other, just to see how they perform a little bit. But I'm not going to go into detail on the EDC version, only because I have a full other video on that, which I will put a link to at the end of this video if you're interested in seeing that one. All right, so we'll put this one out of the way. And the first of the two knives that I'll bring in is the full flat ground version. So here's the knife and the sheath, but let me just share the sheath with you for a minute. So the sheath is, as always, Kydex done perfect by, to perfection by Vic Lin. Simple, nothing outrageous about it, just very, very functional with everything you expect, including drain holes, multiple attachment points, and a nice belt loop to put it in and of course when you put the knife in it snaps in hard it's not coming out without question at all let's put the sheath aside now i'll get into a few specifications for this knife before bringing in the scandi ground version so the overall length tip to pommel is 8 inches 203 millimeters blade length by itself 3.9 inches 99 millimeters blade thickness is 0.15 sevenths of an inch or 4 millimeters weight by the knife, the knife by itself is 6.2 ounces, 176 grams. With the sheath, bumps up to 7.7 .7 ounces, 100 or 218 grams. Now it is referred to as a full flat grind, but as you can see, or at least this is my opinion, is that it's a high saber. But you might as well call it a full flat grind because there's very little flat just at the top up here as well. Okay, the other thing to know about this is that it has a convex secondary edge. Man, Vic does that to perfection. It is just perfectly mirror polished convex on the secondary edge. Now, the, the steel on this version is Bowler N690 cryo dipped. And that's a nice or a good stainless steel above entry line, not high end, but above entry line for sure. Hardened to between 59 and 61 on the Rockwell scale. This one has a satin finished and G10 handles. And let me just give you a few close ups of it. So it is exactly the same handle profile as the original Nomad, but the scales are different. In this case, they're a black G10 and they have green and white liners inside of them, and they have that gator texture on them. Uh, aesthetically looking, I think I prefer the old ones that are on the Nomad EDC that I have. Functionally, these do provide a little bit more grip, but you know, it's just, I guess it's dealer's choice, whatever you prefer. They're held on by Allen screws or Allen bolts, easy to remove if you want to change them. In fact, you could change them if you have both knives or customize and, and, and have something special designed just for your knife. The spine is totally flat and sharp, as you'll see when we get to the scraping demonstration. It does have that little bit of a thumb divot. And now I'm not going to go all through the features of the handle as I did when I did the EDC review, uh, only because, well, it's just, it'd be repetitive. Suffice it to say, it is comfortable, it is versatile, and quite Quite nice to use, as you'll see when I get to the demonstration parts. Okay, let me put that one away, and I'll get the other knife out. All right, now this is the Scandinavian grind version, or zero ground version, of the Nomad Bushcrafter. But before we get into the details of the knife, again, the sheath. Now, this sheath is green kydex, as opposed to the other one being black. Otherwise, you know, identical in every way. The only difference, of course, is I have mine set up on a tech lock, just to be a little different and try it that way. Again, snaps in. It's not coming out. It's 
just what you want in a Kydex sheath. All right, let's do a little detail of the knife itself. So it's a little bit smaller overall. You can see that probably from appearances. You'll see it again, of course, when I hold the two knives side by side. Let's go through the specifications. This knife is 7.8 inches from tip to pommel, 198 millimeters. Blade length is 3.7 inches, 94 millimeters. Blade thickness is the same, though, 0.157 or 4 millimeters. And, of course, this is a little bit lighter, coming in at 6 ounces for the knife, or 170 grams. And when you add the, add the sheath, it bumps it up to 7.5 ounces, 212 grams. Now, this is just short of being a true zero-ground Scandi. Uh, it has a micro bevel on it, and it's more of a... I don't even know what to say. It's so minor. In fact, if it wasn't for the contrast with the finish on the knife, which we'll talk about in a minute, you would think it was zero-ground, but... Hopefully, it'll show up on the camera. Just a little bit of a polished micro bevel, just enough to strengthen the edge without affecting the cutting ability that a true Scandi or true zero ground knife would have. What else can I say about it? The scales are the same as the other Bushcrafter. They're the Gator finish on black G10 with the green and white liners inside. Steel is the same. Bowler N690, cryo dipped at uh, hardened 59 to 61 on the Rockwell scale. It has a flat spine, a flat spine, flat spine, as does the full flat version. And again, it is also very sharp. So it has a lot of similarities and many of the things. Obviously, it's the grind that is different. The other thing that's different, hopefully that's going to show up. It looks like it's stained, and I, I almost thought it was rust when I first got it, but of course it's stainless steel, so it's not going to be rust. It's called the Toxic Apocalypse finish on it. And it actually has a uh, copper coloration on it, just multicolor. Just something that Vic was trying out to see what kind of uptake it had from buyers. Um, it's different. I like it. I don't know that it adds anything to the knife in terms of rust protection. But, you know, it's like a different knife. I think it might look better on a larger blade than it does on this small one. But... It's, it's okay. You know, I certainly don't mind it. That's not what I'm looking for is the finish on this one. All right, so those are the two knives. What else can I say about Oh, yes, I missed this on the other. There is an exposed pommel, and it is quite sharp. Uh, I don't know that it's useful for anything other than if you want to do some hammering of the knife, and there may be an occasion for that. And the scales, I think I failed to show this on the other one, do have thumb scallops. Okay, so those are the two knives in a bit of detail. Let's do a little bit of demonstrating with them. All right, now as far as the demonstrations go, I'm going to keep it simple and just do a couple of demonstrations with each of these knives. And, well, a couple of reasons here. One, time, right? I can only have so much time that I can do demonstrations with two knives in one video. Two, one of the demonstrations I'm going to forego is the splitting or the batoning. And it's not that these knives are not capable of it. At four millimeters, they can go through anything they can span. But... They're not the knives I would choose for doing that, only because they're sub four inch. It's not that they're not strong enough, they certainly are. It's just that they're a bit too short to do any real batoning with. So I'm gonna skip the batoning. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna do feather sticking for sure, but before that, I'm gonna be making some tent pegs. Other one I'm not gonna do because again, they're just equal as far as that goes, and that is scraping. Uh, they're like all of Work Tough Gear knives. They have super sharp spines, they are you know, I don't know that there's another knife, production knife anyway, on the market that comes up to the sharpness and the retained sharpness over time. Like, they remain sharp. So they'll scrape wood, they'll scrape uh, fat wood, and they'll scrape ferrous rods like champs. So I'm going to skip that one as well. All right, so once again, I'm going to do uh, tent pegs first, and then I will do some feather sticks with them. All right, I've cut a couple of pieces of maple, all close to the same length, about three-quarters of an inch in diameter. 13 inches long. This one may be a little bit longer. I'm going to make a couple of tent pegs with each of the two knives. I'm going to do it by hand. No batoning for this, just to mix it up, I guess, a little bit. So, obviously, the first thing we need to do is create a notch that we can use for the guy line to hook into. I'll just roll the knife into the wood and curve it out. A little bit more. and curve it out and just a little bit more 
and curve it out. Well, the poor flat rind moves into the wood so easily because of the thinness. And you can see I'm down to the pith or the center of the wood here. So, all right, let's move that aside. We'll grab the other stick and we'll do the same thing with the scrandy ground knife. About here, I guess. Now, that starts in quickly, very quickly bottoms out because the scandy has such a steep angle on it, or shallow angle, I guess we should say, in this case. But it's doing what I'm asking of it, so no complaints there. And one last time. And we'll clean that out. Okay. L7 notch with the Scandi. L7 notch with the full flat ground. Now let's put a point on these two sticks. All right, we'll start by putting a point on the stick using the full flat ground. And the chest lever grip. I see there's some, not, ooh, that's nice, knots here to, to contend with. So see how that works. Yeah, that's where it grabbed the knot. Now I'm right through the knot, so that's not an issue. Oh yeah, yeah, that full flat ground can really do a job on a piece of wood. All right, let me grab the other knife and the other stick. All right, there's the other stick, and I notice again I have a knot, but uh, let's see how the Scandi ground version works with this. Oh, well, digs in to start with. There is a difference though. I'm avoiding the knot just because it's not worth the effort. All right, point done. All right, I've chosen one of my splits of maple to do some feather sticking with. It's rather large, but I'm going to be using three knives, so I think that's probably a good size for doing that with. When I say three knives, I thought this is a good opportunity to bring in the original Nomad EDC, just to give you an idea of what this knife performs like against the other two. So I'm just going to do a few curls with each to see how that's going to go. And, you know, it could be that I have a bit more time on the EDC than I do on the other two knives, but I love using this. This this is a great all-round EDC. It, it does bushcraft tasks just as well as it does, you know, cutting packages open or preparing food or the other things you might use an EDC knife at home. It does a great job. I, you know, I got very used to using this, and if I'm looking for a small knife for carry for any reason, really, something that's just a little bit more capable than a neck knife, but not as big as a full-on belt knife, this has been a great performer. But that's not what this video is all about. It's about these two knives. And I'm going to start now with the Bushcrafter in Scandi ground knife. And uh, see how that does. I'm going to take those curls off so they don't get in the way. The first one. So, I think you may be seeing what I'm experiencing, and that is this knife wants to bite in kind of deep. It can't get quite the same finesse, the same fine curls I did with the original EDC. I mean, it's feathering. It just takes a little bit more work. Now, the reality is it also takes time to become very familiar with any knife that you're using and be able to get the most out of it. So while I have been using these knives for a couple of months now, m moving back and forth between them, it's maybe that by itself, just moving back and be forth between knives means I'm not getting as used to one knife as it would as if it was the only one I had been using. But still, it's feathering right and doing a good job of it. Let's get rid of that set of feathers so I can move on to the full flat. Now, the last of the three knives is the full flat. A little bit longer blade. Look at that. Right off of the top. Right off of the top. Look at the difference. Finer, finer pearls with less effort. Now, I expect to lose a couple here because I had a break in my run. 
Now you can argue which is better, those super fine curls or the larger ones that the other knife produced. Actually, you need both. You need some larger ones and you need the really fine ones. But this, because it's a taller blade, edge to spine, and full flat ground, and has that convex secondary, makes this quite a slicey knife. Even though it is four millimeters, which is not usually considered, you know, you don't need a knife, carving knife to be that thick. Okay, this one feathers exceptionally well. Winner in the, well, let's, let's, let's kind of rate them, I guess, is the best thing to do. Original EDC Nomad, great feather sticker. Uh, you know, we'll compare the other tasks as we do those. Uh, great feather sticker for this one, and obviously the one I have the most time on. However, in comparing them to the other two knives, I prefer the EDC to what I found with the Scandi ground, but above the both of them is the full flat. It just seemed to shine in terms of feathering. All right, let's see if we can wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts for the Work Tough Gear Nomad Bushcrafter in full flat ground and in Scandi. Now, the first thing I'm going to have to say is Neither of them will replace the EDC for me. The EDC just holds a different niche. As close as it is in terms of size and, and well, identical in terms of handle, it's just a bit of a different knife. It can do all the tasks like a bushcraft knife does, but it's a different knife. I just want to put this in a different classification. So I'm not comparing the two knives in terms of total performance against the EDC, although I did do a demonstration doing exactly that. What I'm doing is comparing the two bushcrafters and help you decide if either of these knives are the one for you. So let's start with the full flat ground. Bit longer blade. Now, I have to say this about being a bushcrafter. This is not your classic bushcraft style knife. And I'm not talking about the handle shape, I'm talking about the blade shape. The handle has its own benefits, a little bit unusual for sure, but it is comfortable despite what it looks like. Full flat grind, or sorry, the flat spine. I guess there are a number of bushcraft knives that have that, but what they do is they don't give you a center point on the point itself. The point is right at the top of the knife. You can still drill with it, just not as easily as you could with a center point on a knife. So just put that out there. The other thing it does, and don't get me wrong, I like the height, and I'll talk more about that in a second, but because the point is so high, the belly of the knife is much greater than it is on most bushcraft knives. So what you get is a very great knife as far as food preparation, as far as maybe even butchering game, but not so great at carving. This does not make a fine carving knife like a true bushcraft knife will. So I just want to put that out there. So to call these bushcraft knives, I'm not saying it's a disservice to them. It's, it's more of a, let's, well, let's be realistic. What can it do in terms of bushcraft and what is it not capable of doing? I actually think this can do all the bushcraft tasks, not just not as well as some more dedicated bushcraft knives are. Having said that, this actually makes a great EDC and general use knife out here in the woods. And the reason for that is that tall blade, that full flat grind, that secondary bevel that is uh, convex and polished, great, very, very slicey knife. I like, well, of course, no secret here, I do like full flat grind knives. And, or high saber grind knives for those reasons alone. In fact, this turned out to be the best of all three knives when it came to feathering. So yeah, it can do bushcraft tasks. So that is the full flat version. Let me bring in the Scandi version. Okay, now, is this a bushcraft knife? Again, I don't think so. And the reason for this is a little bit different. Yes, it does have a full flat spine right across the top. It has less of an angle on the belly up here, so it's a little bit better for carving. But what happens is it's a thick blade. It is really too thick a blade for the height of the Scandi. So it just doesn't perform like other dedicated bushcraft knives that have Scandi ground that usually have thinner steel. Now, this is tougher than a lot of those, and this can certainly withstand a lot more hard use than any of those knives. But it's just not going to feather as well, and it's not going to curve as well. So it's a little bit personal choice. So between the two knives, which is my favorite? Well, I think it's obvious. I like the full flat grind myself. Now, 
you may differ in your opinions on it, and of course you're welcome to have them. And if you have a different opinion, share it with me and tell me why you prefer one of these knives over the other. If you have either, have both or don't have either, and you want to you know, make a few comments on the design for these knives. Okay, uh, that's all I have for you. I'm going to be putting all the specifications for the two knives in the video description. I'll put the links to where you can get them on Work Tough Gear when they are available, of course. I'll also put the links to the secondary markets where you can purchase them and may still be in stock as well. All right, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.